Hello, friends of math. It's that time again. Let's review some AP statistics. This is problem number three from 2018. So just Google it, try the problem first, then come back and watch the video. And then after that, go and check out the scoring guidelines for that question and see how you did. Let's do the math. Okay, this is a probability question. Those are really scary to most people, but you don't have to be afraid. You can feel the fear and then do it anyway. So part A wants us to know what's the probability that a randomly selected child in this region is left-handed, the probability of somebody being left-handed. Now, if you read the question, uh, they give you two events, right? 3% of the children born in the certain region are from multiple births, or they could be single birth, right? That's the first event. And the probability is different for each event. It's not like flipping a coin. So I'm making what's called a weighted tree diagram. This is one of my favorite methods of laying out all of the information. You could also make a table or sometimes a Venn diagram, but I prefer a tree diagram. It works in most cases. So the first split is multiple or single birth. And then if you're born in multiple or single, you could be left-handed or right-handed. And they give us the respective probabilities for each of those. And I'm calculating their complement by subtracting from one because these are binary events. So you're either multiple birth or single birth, left-handed or not. And so you can see on the branches, I'm putting the weights. Then once you lay all that out, you multiply the branches that lead to the terminal end to get the compound probability. So the probability of being from a multiple birth and left-handed is 0 0.035 times 0 0.22, which is 0 0.0077. So I'm gonna go ahead and with my calculator, multiply each set of branches so that I get the outcome of those branches, okay? So when you do a weighted tree diagram, you lay out each split and you put on the branch of the tree diagram the probability of that outcome. And they have to give you uh, those probabilities and you should be able to calculate their complement by subtracting from one, right? So you can see what I'm doing right here is I'm multiplying each set of branches to get the terminal probability or compound probability. All right, so beep, burp, 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 using my technology. And if you want to do a quick check, I didn't do this here, but if you add up all of those red probabilities, what should they add up to? 1.0, they should add up to 100%, right? Because that should cover all of the cases. These are all independent outcomes. Uh, we're assuming that nobody's from both a multiple birth and a single birth. That doesn't really make sense. And we're also assuming that you're either left-handed or not left-handed, which I'm writing here as right-handed, but that could be right-handed or ambidextrous, I guess, theoretically. But this is a math problem, so we're not thinking of those weird special cases, right, unless they tell us to. All right, so what am I doing here? The question was, what's the probability that you're left-handed? So that means you're either left-handed and from a multiple birth, 0 0.0077, or, which means add, uh, you're left-handed from a single birth. So I'm gonna add those two probabilities that involve a left-hander, and I get 0.11385. That's my answer for part A. Okay, part B, what's the probability that a randomly selected child is from multiple births given that they're left-handed? This is called conditional probability, and there's a formula for it. So the formula is the probability of both multiple birth and left-handed divided by the probability of being left-handed. You always divide by the given, whatever the given information is, okay? So what's the probability that someone's a multiple birth and left-handed? I already calculated that. That was 0 0.0077. And the probability of being left-handed in general was the answer to part A, which was, let's check it out, 0.11385. Okay, and show your work here. Set up this uh, division, set up this ratio. Let's go to our calculator and divide them. And that'll be our answer. So when you're asked to do a conditional probability of A given B, it's the probability of both divided by the probability of B, whatever the given was. Let's try part C. A random sample of 20 children is to be selected. What's the probability that the sample will have at least three children who are left-handed? So the sample size is 20. Uh, we want the probability at least means greater than or equal to. So I'm gonna write that as x is greater than or equal to three, and I also have to, 
to define x. You can't just use variables without defining them. So x is going to be the number of left-handed children um, out of a sample of 20, right? Okay, so that's my definition for x. Now, this is a binary situation, okay? Binomial probability situation, all right? How do I know it's binomial? Well, it, it follows these four requirements called bins. It's binary, so left-handed or not. They are independent of each other, meaning one person's left-handedness is not affecting the next person. The number of trials is fixed, it's 20, and the success probability is known and remaining constant, right? What's the success probability? The success probability is what we found in part A, the probability that anyone is left-handed. Now to calculate the probability of three or more successes out of 20 trials, we're gonna use one minus binome CDF in the calculator, which is the cumulative binomial density function. That's what CDF stands for, cumulative density function. Uh, and to do x is greater than or equal to 2, we need to do 1 minus, because the calculator calculates less than or equal to. If you do cumulative, it's less than or equal to. So I want to subtract off less than or equal to 2, so that I'm left with 3 or more, okay? So the number of trials is going to be 20, the success probability is 0.11385 from part A, and 2 is called the end point. That's the specific number of successes, okay? So I'm going to type this into my calculator and see how it goes. So if you want to do less than or equal to, you just do binome CDF. If you want to do exact, like exactly three successes out of 20, you would do binome PDF. But if you want greater than or greater than or equal to, you have to do one minus. You have to do the complement. So I'm typing in the uh, values here. The X value is two, paste, and I get 0 0.4021498. 0 0.402 is good enough. I usually leave in my final answer three digits at least after the decimal point and show all your work, obviously. And if you're writing down calculator lingo, what you want to do is you want to label everything. All right, I hope you had a great time reviewing with me. I'll see you next time. Don't forget to hit subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications so you get my new videos as they come out. May the math be with you. Math has ended. Go in peace. See you next time.